Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builders Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Trimco number 3910-613. This is a dustproof strike, no faceplate, dark oxidized oil rubbed bronze is what they call this. Uh, so this is a 3910N. This would be no faceplate in the sense that this small little perimeter trim is in lieu of a large rectangular faceplate that you would have. Those large rectangular faceplates would be used when you are installing the material down maybe into a wood floor or some sort of surface where you might be mortising or you're going to apply the strike right over on top. But really, when you, when you don't have a threshold is when you use a rectangular uh, faceplate. When you have a threshold, you're not going to use that rectangular style. You're going to drill a threshold through, you're, pardon me, you're going to drill a hole through the threshold down into the floor stick this down through it and then hold it on with this spring clip that's here okay that's how those work let's take a quick dimensional run of this material overall height about an inch and nine sixteenths underside from the underside of the the lip about an inch and a half we're going to look at the um, documentation in a moment the od of the face 1.243, 1.243. The diameter of the body, 0 0.938, 0 0.938. And the question that we get all the time is what is the inside diameter of a dustproof strike? And this is 0 0.857. 0 0.857 is the inside diameter. So what are you going to stick into there? Probably nothing much bigger than Five eighths, I would think at the most. Uh, people say, "Hey, will uh, will a deadbolt work in there?" Nope, it's too small. There is a dustproof strike that will that will take a, a proper size full bolt from a deadbolt. If you want to have a bolt in the bottom rail of the door and a dustproof strike in the floor, there is a manufacturer who makes one, but it's not circular like this. It's an unusual style. Reach out to us and we can help you with that. So, why are you looking at a dustproof strike? What are they used for? And what has brought you to this video. Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Well, what has brought you to this video perhaps might be the fact that someone has specified a dustproof strike, and maybe you're not familiar with a dustproof strike, or maybe perhaps you just want to see what the Trimco 3910N looks like, or someone's asked a question and you found this video. Um, dustproof strikes are used when you have a flush bolt in the bottom of the door and you need to secure that down to the floor and you're not just going to drill a sloppy hole. The problem with just drilling a hole, and it's a classic problem whether it be flush bolts or it be exit devices or anything that needs to secure or la bolt or latch to the floor is over time that hole that you create is going to collect with particulate. Sooner or later what needs to go in there is not going to go all the way in because there's dust, dirt, and debris that's filled that. It's observed. It's very typical. You see that sort of negligence in um, surface bolts when they've got just their rectangular strike and, no, and can no longer really secure. It might grab the inside lip of the strike preparation but you can't get the bolt pushed all the way down. So, dustproof strikes obviously snap back up every time that you pull the bolt out. Hence, dustproof strike, because nothing can really get collected inside of there. In 30 years, I've heard one person say that, uh, a lady say that the high heel of her shoe went down in there. Um, you know, hey, what if a high heel sh uh, goes into that hole? Okay, sure, that it's very very <laughs> I've heard of it one time um, but however anything that pushes down on that's going to force that to collapse is the bottom line um, now the 3910 series is specifically used uh, and Trimco doesn't really talk about it very much that's one thing about Trimco their catalog historically over the decades um, has done less to have language in it that says here's what this is used for very brief um, if anyone were to have uh, language that would work to explain the application of, of hardware, it should be Trimco. They've been in Trimco's been a company since probably the mid 20th century, if not well before that. 
Um, I know that Trimco manufactured a lot of the mid-20th century, the whole uh, modern sort of look, early 60s, the atomic sort of look, escutcheons that went underneath knobs, knob trim, their rosettes, the spectacular splayed out sort of atomic looking escutcheons, and I have some in my lock collection, I, they're beyond reach, but Trimco made a lot of that stuff. The lock manufacturers did, of course, too. But the lock manufacturer's plates were generally a part of the lock itself. Um, not always. Or someone like Schlage, who was in California uh, during that time, I believe. Uh, Trimco being a California company, there was probably some work back and forth because I've seen some plates that I believe that Trimco may have been assisting them in manufacturing. Schlage may have been buying that stuff from them. So the point of the matter is a company who's been in business for so many decades they could tell you this is the type that's used for a non uh, for for when you have a threshold and again what you'll do is you'll mark your location in the threshold the threshold has to come out you're going to drill the appropriate hole you're going to stick this down into it and then this is what's called a retaining ring there are retaining ring pliers when you squeeze them the jaws actually open up open up rather than close You'll open up that, pull the retaining ring off, get the this push down into the threshold, and put the retaining ring on it. Now, generally, retaining rings will fit into a groove. This material is far too thin to create a groove, um, and that would definitely be a improvement to this design. I, I'm quite sure that there are other manufacturers who have this type of dustproof strike that have a retaining ring groove in it that would keep it positively in place. Um, but, you know, there's no pulling on the unit. If it's free and clear of uh, its surroundings, it really shouldn't move at all. In fact, the only pressure that you'd ever be putting on it is downward. So I don't think you'd have much trouble with this coming loose. Clearly not. This design has been around for a very long time. Now, they say that this is 613. It's not. Uh, this is definitely not 613. Um, and I hate to call them out on it, but I'm going to call them out on it. Um, not that that really necessarily matters to you so much, but 613 means two things. It means it's made of bronze and that it's in an oil rubbed finish. This is probably made of stainless with a steel spring and then it's been powder coated to be equivalent to oil rubbed bronze. I realize on the camera it looks extremely black. It's not black. Only when you hold it up to something black can would you be able to tell, yeah, that's I see that brown, that's there. Anyway, um, it's, they call it 613. Frankly, they shouldn't, uh, but they are. What they should call it is US-10B, and that doesn't declare the base material. It just means oil rub bronze, therefore open to interpretation because we don't really know what the base material is in the sense of the US system isn't tied to a particular base material like the three-digit BHMA system is, which is 613. Uh, and they are clearly using the BHMA system for this. So let's switch to the screen view. Let's do a little deeper dive into exactly uh, what this item is in terms of what supporting documentation we have. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at the photos that we have posted here. Uh, okay, and here they are. These are linked to down below. You will need retaining ring pliers. You don't want to, you, you're going to need those absolutely. Uh, retaining ring pliers. This is absolutely what retaining ring pliers look like. Uh, I, actually, these are the exact ones that I that I the exact ones that I have. They might be by channel lock. Um, I prefer them in certain. Well, you're going to get different tips with these. Uh, looking for a photo that I like more.
uh, gear wrench. They're calling them snap ring pliers. Okay, that's what that looks like. And some models have convertible tips where you can do a 90 degree angle. Um, I don't think that it would be necessary for this, but I find it a little easier to control the retaining ring with two hands when I've got a 90 degree angle. Fixed tip, convertible, removes and installs external and internal snap rings. So there you go. That's You're going to need this tool to install this item. Uh, that shows us the face of the unit. That texture you see there is an indication that this is powder coated. Um, showing the dustproof strike where the top cap is depressed and then the underside just showing you what it looks like from the underside now we have a couple of documents here they're both called product catalog not sure why this is a cut sheet uh, you've got the one with the faceplate you've got the one without the faceplate the N and then you have a convertible style okay if you're not sure what you're dealing with and let's say that you've got a half a dozen or 20 of these to do you might order the 3911 just because it doesn't matter. Whatever, whether or not you have a threshold, um, you can make this one work because the faceplate threads off. Um, generally, you know, Trimco has three options. I generally see two options from other people, but it's nice to have this option. If you're going to be doing a job, you're going to specify the proper dustproof strike. It's either with the faceplate or without because you as the specifier knows whether or not there's a threshold and knows what the floor condition is. Uh, so you, that's what you'll be specking. Product catalog again. Okay, that's a template. We're going to get that uh, corrected. And this is going to give us an idea of what we're looking at here. This is a, yeah, apparently they don't have a 3910N template. They don't. Add suffix N to part number for dust proof strike less faceplate. So what I'm gathering here is when they do a faceplate, they're just adding the faceplate to a 3910N, and then that retaining ring is going to hold the faceplate. You know, obviously the design works. Um, there's never been a problem with it, apparently. I don't like the design because you've got that lip sitting on top of a faceplate. That could be cleaner. Um, and it's really not indicated at all, well... As I had said earlier, there could be more information here. Um, the point of this is this, this document hasn't changed in 26 years. Um, assuming this is current, it probably is. Uh, they're not giving us a drill size. So if you've got 15 sixteenths here, what are you going to drill? Well, you're probably going to drill the. You're probably going to use the tool that you already own. That's probably one inch. I would find that that would be agreeable. Obviously, you've got to be spot on with where your flush bolt is, um, and you know where you install the dustproof strike because that ID and they say it at 0.75 three quarter inch. I measured it to be a little bit heavier. Um, let's just assume it's three quarter inch putting something a half of an inch in there, you only have an eighth of an inch margin all the way around um, the circumference of it. So yeah, you've got to be accurate when you when you install this. That's the bottom line. An old carpenter's trick is to put lipstick on the end of the bolt and then throw the bolt, which then marks the area that you want to drill. And it's really used on deadbolts to jams. But I suppose you could use that trick here. I suppose you could. And uh, there you go. There's the template. Now, there is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. And from here, you can pull up not only all of the Trimco products we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Uh, also, what's on here are a set of master cut sheets, Trimco cut sheets uh, that are probably on much of their product line, but not everything. It's just one page uh, documents that you can include in a specification set. Uh, there's also going to be their focal product line here, which are going to be decorative poles and hardware that has been architecturally designed 
Uh, and also their uh, classic, um, I don't, you know, I, I was going to say, they, I believe that they call their masterpiece or mastercraft, obviously. And this material has been in their catalog for years, if not decades. Um, really nice classic material. I don't know how much of this they still sell. I know that I had, this is a beautiful, this 1901, that's a beautiful push plate. Um, I know that about two, three years ago, I sold, I had a client who wanted something outstanding for their door. Yeah, it was the Juno. Uh, we did the Juno poll, um, an awful photograph of it here. I probably have a photograph of the Juno. Uh, I actually have a video of it. Yeah, I did the Juno in a 613 equivalent oil rub bronze. So if we were to um, search for my, in the site, if you look up Juno 613E, there's a video here of me reviewing this pole handle. So sorry. And this is what that Juno pole looks like. And when I had attempted to order it from the factory, they said, oh, I'm not sure if we have any of those castings. I got to go look. Um, but they did. And they were able to then powder coat it. And the client specifically wanted powder coating because um, this country club in Naples, here where we are, after about five years, all of their oil rub bronze levers, they were wanting to replace them because they didn't look nice. And you'll find that a lot uh, in certain areas. I was on a job site yesterday where they were replacing the locks. The locks are perfectly fine, but they're replacing them because they, they, they have, the finish has failed with exposure to the elements. So we're going to replace that lock trim. Uh, we're going to do some you know, field work for the client. But this client wanted um, this pull handle, but oil rub bronzed powder coated equivalent, which happens to be what this 3910N is shown in, um, because they didn't want the finish to fatigue. Now, how does that apply to the 3910N? It does in the sense that um, it's a powder coated finish, so it's going to be more durable in the sense of it's just going to stay the finish. Um, you know, it's more like an automotive finish where it's extremely durable. You know, your car doesn't change after two years very much. Um, anyway, I wanted to point that focal catalog out to you. And then if you're doing pull handles from Trimco, there's a cheat sheet that I've put here for their mounting types so that you know what mounting types can be done on some of that material. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. So whenever you're doing pairs of doors and you have um, a flush bolt at the bottom of the door, yeah, you should be thinking about what strike am I going to put down there. Um, you might just be using the strike that it comes with. Um, however, I think it would be argued that every pair of doors um, ought to have a, should, would have a uh, flush bolt, um, a, a dustproof strike. Uh, specified in that hardware set uh, because you know otherwise you might be just simply allowing a uh, maintenance uh, condition to occur um, and then the ultimate failure of proper operation on that bottom bolt it happens you know and what do people do then well then they force the hardware and then something will eventually break anyway if you have any questions on the 3910N dust proof strike from Trimco or any other Trimco product please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.